like a fool on a Friday, right? <laughs> <laughs> so how's everybody doing? Panama. What's up, Ernesto? Hello. We gotta go to Panama. We do need to go. I, I cannot wait to tour all over the world, but Panama would be a lot of fun. A lot. What science are we talking about, Faith? We can't figure out YouTube Live. You want us to help you with your science. <laughs> yeah, you might not want that, right? We're at in <laughs> Texas. I can't wait to get back to Texas. Really oh, I know. Can't I can't wait, wait to, to get anywhere, but you know. Y'all, my suitcases are lonely. They're just like collecting dust under my bed, and I hate it. Normally, we're out on the road all the time. Oh, Zoom. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it's hard for teachers. I know it's got to be hard for you guys. I mean, look at this mess. We can't even do a Facebook Live or YouTube Live. San Antonio. All right. We've never played. No, but we did visit. Yes. Uh, we had played Houston and then we had a day off on the way home before we hit the long trek back to California and went to San Antonio. It was gorgeous. We had a lot of fun. All right, Stephanie. Woodlands. Hey, man, we had such an amazing show set up in the woodlands. Uh, I was so Cynthia Woods bummed. something pavilion, pavilion. Yeah. whatever. Yeah, uh, we was had a lot be... of friends that were going to be there and family, and it just that was a real bummer. It's going to be a big one. Yeah, but you know, here we are. I'm hopeful. Here we are. Be good on YouTube Live. Exactly, Audrey. I know. I was like, oh, <laughs> very much so. Audrey just had a birthday. I cannot believe it. I remember when she was just a tiny little thing, but a happy belated birthday. I hope you had fun in Roswell. So let's see. Let's start this Q&A. Um, I have questions. I mean, do you guys like these things? We did one last week on Facebook. We are trying our best on YouTube, you know, and we figured, you know, if you guys like them, we'll keep doing them. I just don't know, like, how much is too much? You know, you can definitely beat people over the head and just become unwelcome visitors if you do this too often. So what do you guys think? We're trying to get things figured out, you know. I mean, now that touring is not a thing, and touring was our thing, right? Touring was probably 95% of our business. So yeah. now we're having to figure things out a bit, and um, you know, going live seems like a good way to stay connected. If we can't be together in the same venues, at least we can do this. Yeah. Is that cool that. or is that not cool? I see one person say, yeah, it's a cool format if, as long as it works, right? When it works, <laughs> Stephanie yeah. says. Yeah. So we did a, a really cool live show. When was that? This week? It was last night? Two and, nights ago. And I learned through actually that. So the reason that some of this is not working for us is because we don't have enough followers. Right. Uh, honestly, that's what it is. We don't have enough subscribers. Once we get enough subscribers and there's like new tools available to right. us, but we're kind of new to this format. So we're restricted. They won't uh, let us do it on the phone. Yeah. Cause I was, we we're going to do it from our phone, which would have been a lot better, but we can't do that because we don't have enough subscribers. We're newbies. Newbies. So we need your help guys. You got to help us spread the word. Yeah. You know, there's really no, there's no way to just like magically get a bunch of followers. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, snake yeah. oil salesmen that can get you a bunch of fake followers. We don't want fake we followers. Want we want real. We want real. Fans, yeah, fans. we want people like, you know, we we know most of you guys here, which is really cool yeah. to us. Yeah, Faith says I I think it's Faith. I can't have Facebook. I saw somewhere. Yeah, you're not missing anything. Don't tell mm -hmm. Facebook that. We were, well, I'm only on it because of this ban, and it's a, a way to reach people. But really, I mean, well, I like YouTube a lot better. It's fun. All right. Yeah. Yep. Reading Stephanie's. Stephanie's, yeah. Yeah, I see that. Uh, master classes. Yeah, teaching lessons. I mean, man, could y'all imagine what this would have been like without the Internet? I mean, people really, really would be stuck in little bubbles and not connecting with people. So at least we have that. Thank you, Sherry. We miss you. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, perform. you got to like performances. I like the chatting, too, because typically, you know, when we're doing a show, there's a real, you know, a time limit. You've got a schedule and you can't go over your time limit. Um, so we allow for talking when we can. But, um, you know, you have to just get everything in. This is a little easier because it's fun. It's more like a conversation. and We get to talk to you guys more. You know, hopefully you guys get to know us a little better. 
That's right, Paula. Yes, find your tribe. We've never really been into that, getting the bots and stuff. A lot of a lot of uh, artists did that to get numbers up. But I mean, really just kind of skews your analytics. You don't really know if you're being effective or if you're just talking to fake bots, right? Well, you always hear this story um, about like some of these influencers and this guy had like millions of followers. And so some companies said, well, here, you know, promote our t-shirt brand because that's kind of what an influencer does, right? They're a, basically a salesman and guy couldn't even sell 18 shirts. And that tells you right there that, you know, his numbers were skewed. It's fake. You can buy them or people were just following, hoping he would follow back or whatever. Our numbers are low, but I guarantee you almost every single person has either seen us at a show or met us in person or has bought a CD, you know, or hopes to do one of those things. And we appreciate and like that. We want real fans, you know, but obviously we need more, <laughs> you know, lots of things open up more when we get more numbers. So we just keep asking everybody, you know, please go like, go subscribe and all that good stuff. We're kind of new to it. You know, we, we tour all the time, so we've been too busy to do things like YouTube. Yeah. And so now that's we're focusing on that, trying to play catch up. Um, we have a lot of fans. We just got to find them and they have to find us on YouTube. It seems right. to be kind of a slow growth on that platform. But yeah. that may be one of the better platforms for us right now. So that's where we're focusing. Because, yeah. you know, like one of the things I don't like about Facebook is that, you know, we've worked hard to get just about hovers around 6,000 fans. Um, if we put out a notification, hey guys, we're going to be doing X, Y, or Z, they'll limit it and maybe only 160 people actually see that post. And then they say, hey, if you want more people to see it, send it, give us money and pay. And that kind of defeats the purpose, right? I mean, we've worked hard to get these fans and they're expecting to hear from us and they don't because we are, you know, doing this ourselves. We don't have tons of money. Whereas YouTube doesn't do that. They send out the notifications and they make it pretty easy. You know, so we're really focusing efforts here and, you know, we're happy you guys are joining us here. Yeah. I think we did a post, we did a post about this live stream on our Facebook. Again, she said we have like 6,000 fans. It reached 250 people. Yeah. So um, that tells you something right there. Yeah, they, they throttle. And especially since it had a link going out to YouTube, they throttle that big time. So in order to reach all of our 6,000 people, we would have probably had to have paid, you know, probably some hundreds of dollars yeah. to, to make that happen. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's yeah. kind of messed up, but and yeah. it is oh, what it is. You know, we are, I feel like a broken record sometimes telling people like, please go follow us, you know, but uh, we're trying, you know, I mean, it's a great idea and it, we're trying really hard. We're trying to focus on YouTube and then Spotify because Spotify, you know, we see those numbers and we can go in there and, you know, manage that a little more than Apple. But Apple, as of today, our music videos are on Apple. So I'm excited about that. Yes. You can actually go watch them there. But uh, watching on YouTube is more helpful to us. <laughs> Let's see, Sean said, I love your song on Now 75. Oh, thank, thank you, you so, much. so much. Yeah, we're super excited to be included in that. And we haven't gotten into those groups yet. I think you may have sent us um, some information on it. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to get in the groups and and chat about it. Um, are they are they talking about it in those those chat rooms, Sean? Are they people digging our song? Let us know. Yeah, that's been cool. That's been really fun, and we're still working with the now seventy five people. Yeah. Uh, we got a performance coming up. Um, living room session performance yep. for them on their YouTube. We, uh, did, we did a twenty questions thing. Um, so we got some more promo coming. We're still kind of riding that promo wave. It looks like that's going to go for maybe a, a month more or something like that. And, you know, our song went live on all the streaming surf service services. Now, I think this, a week ago, a week ago today. today. And so, um, you know, if you guys are on Spotify or Apple or whatever, whatever you use, what, what are you guys using? Is it Spotify? Is it Apple? Um, but either way, Go stream our song or songs. It helps. That that really does help us a oh, lot. Thanks, Sean. I'm glad to hear that. So they are loving it. Okay. I'll send you a link. Good. Oh, so, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. So we'll, yeah, we'll get involved and, and talk to them. That's been cool because we've been getting a lot of new fans through the Now 75 group. They're um, like a little community and I love that. It's, you know, yeah, like it's interesting. Family. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It is its own little ecosystem. I dig it. 
yeah. it's kind of cool that we're now a part of that family. For sure. And I was pretty excited because uh, we got a package in the mail two days ago. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't know what this is. And I opened it up and it was our copy of Now 75. Oh, yeah. That That's was pretty cool. exciting. I was like, That's fun. <laughs> That's a fun moment when you see your name in print there. It's like, yes. So we see a couple of Spotify. We are, yeah, we are on Spotify. Yeah, which we love, you know. And I've got to update the profile, add some more photos and things. And I'm trying to do playlists, and I made them public for you guys. Just interesting bands that I like. Uh, I'll try to add that to our Spotify profile, and uh, hopefully you guys can see it. I've got like a feels like Friday is fun. I play it on a Friday, but usually it's a good one to play on a Monday when you're wishing it was Friday. <laughs> And it's just kind of upbeat, you know, a lot of pop music and just really interesting, fun, kind of dancey stuff to get you in a good mood. And then I've got Low Key Week, which is kind of like more subdued, but uh, still really fun, just moody, atmospheric stuff. And then Make Pretty Things is what I would use when I'm like working, like on websites or graphic design. And I don't want too many vocals getting in the way because then I'll be like, what's that? So it's just really good instrumental background music. And then I've got our... Rhymes with Robot, which is our Dozot St. Marie playlist and helping people know how Dozot is pronounced. And then I've got uh, Where Were You? Asks Dozot St. Marie. And that's kind of a fun playlist, actually. It's got our stuff in it. And then it's got artists who have inspired us and also artists whose music sometimes we'll throw a cover in on a live set sometimes, but we do it our way. And so that's a fun one, too. It's kind of eclectic. So check them out. They're all public on Spotify. And if you like them, follow and let us know what's up. If you want to hear other things or if you have suggestions. She's the music curator of the yeah. household. And I'll tell you, some of these playlists have like thousands of songs because my ideal playlist is like, okay, you've got nine days worth of music and you'll never hear the same thing for nine days. So you hit shuffle and then that way it's just going continuously. And the reason for that is because a lot of times we're in the car driving thousands of miles across the country. When we played with Pat Benatar, we left. It was kind of weird, actually. So our car, our touring car broke and we had to hurry up and get a new car <laughs> and drove left from the dealership, loaded all our stuff in, Ooh. left from the dealership. And our first show was in Maryland. Maine. Maine. So we drove from North Hollywood, California, all the way to, to Maine. Maine to play a show. Fremont stage would have been where in Maine? I don't remember, but it was a gorgeous stage. Really fun. Yeah, I don't remember now. But anyway, so we drove. We drove for days. Three days across the U.S. from North Hollywood to Maine. Yeah. And the last thing you want to do is like, what do we want to listen to now? So that's why I like to just put on a playlist, hit shuffle, and like all three days you're just listening to it. And who knows what's going to pop up? So let's see. I'm talking quite a bit. I see now, music collector. What's your name, if you don't mind, just because we're on first name basis here? <laughs> just curious. We know Sean. I think Sean was the first now fan. That, yeah, we that made a lot of cool met. friends through that, for sure. All right. Hi, Rudy. Rudy. It's great to meet you. Good to meet you, Rudy. Welcome to the Dozot St. Marie family as well. I'm Matt. I'm Heather. There you go. Yep. And uh, Audrey says the guitar in the background is cool. So, Matt, you want to tell them the story about this guitar? So, I bought this for Heather because it's really rare pink. Uh. Anyway, I bought this for Heather whenever, um, shortly after she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, I, I saw it. I just I thought it'd be cool to do something like that. Um, and, and I think I, I just, I, I mentioned it to her. You know, it would be really cool to have, but that's a really rare, you don't see that. And I just happened to pop open, uh, I think it was on Facebook Marketplace. And there it was, like first thing that popped up was this thing. Um, cool guy that he sells uh, buys and sells kind of rare cool guitars had mm -hmm. it and so i bought that for her to yeah, kind of commemorate the baby. uh the cancer battle yep oh cool thanks rudy. thanks rudy 
Awesome. Yeah, we love, you know, Common Ground, we were lucky with that one. It, it's kind of a song that, you know, we find people of all different ages really appreciate and enjoy. And we're so grateful for that. So I'm glad to hear your family likes it. It's been a fun ride. And the music video is now only two weeks old, I think. Yeah. But so it's, it's two weeks old. It, it almost has, oh, let me check, it almost has 40,000. Yeah, it's crazy. And we're so happy about that. And thank you, Rudy. Yeah. You know, cancer, it blows. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, it actually taught me a whole lot about life, uh, both of us. You know, I mean, we try to be good people. We try to be caring and open with people we meet. But I don't think that you can even be as empathetic towards people going through rough times until you've been through really rough times. And in a weird way, I mean, I wouldn't wish it on anyone and I wouldn't have wanted to get cancer, but it was a beautiful strangely beautiful experience. I mean, we, you know, like this guy, we connected with, you know, a lot of people, um, strangers, you know, helping us out and doing kind things for us. You know, it's been amazing. And I'm able to appreciate even more all the little things like being here today to talk to you guys and connecting, you know, it's just been um, an interesting journey for sure, but beat it. And now we're off helping other people with all this stuff. You know, that's what we like to do. Oh, cool. 22, and you're going to be 23 September 4th. All right. Well, Very cool. Happy early birthday. That's coming really soon. Coming up yeah. soon, right? We're almost at the end. I know. Can you, you guys believe it? I mean, it's crazy. already almost fall. Ugh. Maddie has the same guitar, but oh, black with neon green strings. That's pretty cool. And Do you know what year your uh, Fender It's It's a Strat, I'm guessing. This one is a 90... Four. Cool. So we're one. I love it. So while we're waiting, I've got another question for you guys because we have a few people asking. It's a, it's a weird time for us because, um, you know, nowadays it used to be you'd, you'd write a bunch of songs and then you'd demo them out and then you'd put an album together and maybe cut a couple of them to keep them for later. You know, and you'd compile this album and you'd finally say, hey, guys, here you go. It's been a couple years, but here's our album. And then you tour on it for a while. And nowadays it's like you've got to have a single and then a couple months later, another single and another single. So we've been doing that. We're seeing a lot of growth and we're excited about it. But at what point do we put out a CD or do we? Some people ask for it and it shows we have CDs usually because it's kind of fun. You know, you can sign it and hand it over and it's almost like a collector's item more than an actual thing that people put in and listen to. Um, you know, I mean, but what do you guys think? I mean, because CDs are an investment. You have to buy, you know, for us, you know, you've got to buy at least a thousand to start with. And yeah, I'll tell like you, buy I mean, more if we can just right. to get that price point down. Yeah. You know, and so like, you know, we were ready to get on tour this year and we have about 5,000 of our EPs sitting in our studio in boxes and who knows when we're going to get to go out in the world and sell them, you know? And so my question to you guys, like, you know, should we at some point think about putting some songs out, you know, and would you rather see five songs for around five bucks, like an EP that's easy to just kind of do or wait and put out like a full album? You know, I know vinyl people ask for, but that you've got to have enough, data to actually make a vinyl record so i mean i'm just curious Which what we you will. guys think we will do vinyl at some at point. some point we will we're just trying to decide do we do it now uh, when we're not able to tour or do we should we do that right before we go on tour where we can support it and sell it at the merch table yeah so we'll that's kind of the question i mean would you guys like buy that would you want us you know to release something and then you know we can ship out yeah, we can put it on the website, sell it, you know, and, and, and you know, if we're going to go there, like, what about shirts? You know, I was thinking about on Common Ground, my favorite lyric and a lot of people's too is, you know, together we sat, we're an orchestra and alone we're just a sound. I thought that'd be kind of cool as a t-shirt, you know, maybe we do a package, a CD and a shirt or something. And see Allison joined us. She collects CDs. Yep. We knew that. Yes. Yep. She's awesome. We miss you. Uh, Sean saying... 500 CDs. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That's 170 amazing. vinyl. Wow. You that should is... take a, a photo of your collection. Oh, no, I'd love, to see, I'd love to see that. Love to see that. That's great. 
Um, full album, Maureen says. Okay. Which just means eight or more songs. Right. Which we have. We uh, definitely. We're do. releasing. So, how many we released this year now? Two. Two this year. We did we time to go coming. home right before cancer, so we didn't really promote it much. It so we really have to kind of super soft release. Yeah, we kind of have to get back out and push that one. You know, so that's at least three. We've got one more coming out in October. We might put out like a cover in between because. You know, that seems to be doing really well for us as well. You know, we like to make songs our own style and throw that out. Oh, Audrey thank says you. CDs might be better than vinyl. Okay. okay. But we'll, we'll do both. I mean, we will definitely have both formats at some point. So Paula saying, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, that's true, Paula. So like, that was an art form back in the day with vinyl and then with CDs later. Um, you know, you, we, when we had our rock band Hydra Vibe and we put out a full album, we actually went down to the mastering house here in LA and sat with a guy that night and listened and actually decided how many seconds of space in between each song so that the, the mood could linger and then lead you into the next one with the right amount of time. But what's funny is now with like, you know, streaming, you might hear a song because it's on shuffle. I mean, I do it too, right? And so you don't really get that experience that we crafted that album, Nothing Left to Lose. Emotionally to me, it was like our journey of moving to LA and trying to do the record label thing and then realizing it wasn't what we wanted and then kind of going all the way down to rock bottom and then coming back up and coming full circle. And so that's kind of how the energy of the album you know, does this, but we actually even thought about the space in between, kind of like a, a palate cleanser, if you will. You know, and so we definitely would put that much care into. It probably doesn't, it probably doesn't surprise you that, that we're that serious about this stuff. Oh, I mean, we, yeah, these are our babies. I mean, we just, <laughs> you know, we, I've always said, you want to put everything into it with no ego. Like if he's like, you need to redo that vocal. It's not, I think you have a better one in you. I can't get upset, not that he does it often, but you know, usually I say, I think I've got a better one in me. But we both keep each other in check because we wanna make sure that we put out the best thing possible so that I could go you know, to your home, let's say, and say, here's my CD and put it down and walk away and know that you guys are gonna understand who we are and what we were trying to get across with that. So we think of everything, the art, the sound, all of it. So Audrey, like, does Gen Z which I didn't even know was a thing. Does <laughs> Gen Z buy CDs? Do they, do they buy CDs? Do your friends buy CDs? I mean, do you guys even have a CD player? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, no computers have them anymore. Cars are cars don't really, really have them. With them. It's funny, you know. Yes. Okay, you do. All right, y'all do. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, you have a CD player. Okay. High five to the parents on that one. They're raising you right. Is that is that common? Are you a rare bird? That's what we need to know. Right. We know you're a rare bird, but do your friends have CD? Your players? friends have yeah. CD players. We're just curious. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Word of mouth is the best, by the way, guys. I think so. You know, if you share our music or anything of ours, you're saying, I believe in this, I like this, and I think that you will too, and, and people receive that and take it more seriously. Yeah, way better than us saying. 50 CDs. Cool, okay. Rudy's, you know, you're just, just a little bit behind Sean at 50 CDs to his 500. <laughs> you might have a little catching up to do. Cassettes. I've heard cassettes are coming mm -hmm. back. I love the 1975, and I think I saw that they were putting things out, vinyl, digital, and cassette. Thing is, if you grew up in the South like me and you accidentally left your cassettes on the dash, you'd come back and they were just melted. It's the <laughs> worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, cassette players are old school. It was fun. You had to, like, flip them over and things to hear the other side. But, um... So let's see what else. That's it. You know, the sound is supposed to be really good. I'm sure. You know, digital sometimes is a little too clean. Well, Sean, cassettes. All right. Cassettes. All right. All right. 
Do you Sean, have any eight tracks? Sean, do you know if they did now? Does the now group put out cassettes or vinyl, or is it all CDs? Seems like we should probably know the answer to that, but I do not. I, yeah. I really don't know. Because that would be interesting. I mean, if they do, if they did vinyl or cassette, I want that too. Oh, I know. It'd be kind of cool to have on the wall, right? Yeah. Like the, vinyl would be unreal. Two vinyls. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. we're going to have to talk to them about that. That's interesting. So, I cassettes. I like the look of cassettes, obviously. Okay. Yep. 90s. Yeah, 90s are definitely back. I tell you that. Ooh, vinyl for now 74. So, maybe they did do a vinyl for now 75. We're going to have to look okay. at that. Yeah. For sure. I would Gotta love have to have that. I think I would frame it and put it, you know, somewhere here. Kind of a blank spot right there. That right? We need something. We can move the little tree, the fig tree, maybe. I was hoping that my gold record would go here, but it's it hasn't come in yet. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Sean, they do. It's just like, yeah, the, the sound is a little gritty, yeah. a little grainy, but uh, this is warm. Yeah. Well, it's the same as like the, the recording style back then. Like, I love when you're hearing a recording and you can kind of hear like a bass pedal squeaking or it might be just a little bit off. It's not so perfected like it is now because now it's all robotic. And when you close your eyes and you're listening and you can almost see the musician in the studio, that to me is such a connection, you know. It's part of why, I mean, I fell in love with Dylan recently, you know, and it's like he's got his version in the studio and you wonder what he was going through then. And then live, it's completely different, you know, the vibe. He stays true to the song, but it's just like what he's feeling in that moment. And I like that. You know, it's kind of that doty approach to music. Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Have not seen it, but that's how you got into cassettes, huh? Nice. I guess if we saw Guardians of the Galaxy, we'd understand that leap into yeah. cassettes. Did they uh, we have play cassettes? I don't know not seen it we don't watch movies a whole lot guys okay cassettes. well maybe we'll have to do that this weekend that's some homework cassettes were harder to break than cds yeah that's true i don't know if i broke any cds i remember like when we would burn cds you know for like demos oh, yeah, and stuff yeah. and i wanted to make sure that nobody would ever steal it i would try oh, to yeah. break them that's no, not really easy to hard. break yep i like the cd emojis okay Ooh. Finals, yeah. Hey, L. Hi. Don't worry, L. It took us fifteen minutes to get on, so you know. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. It was almost an embarrassment, but hey, what else, right? Okay. Cool. Seventies music. Yeah. Seventies music always reminds me of going to the dentist. Because I think as a kid, the dentist we had always put it on the easy listening channel. It was almost always seventies, so it kind of triggers me. <laughs> Triggered. Yep. So you guys have any questions for us? Is there anything you're dying to know or want to hear more about? We really are intending this thing to be more like a kind of a, a hang town hall sort of thing. Yeah. We're trying to figure out things. We're all trying to figure out things right now that this is kind of a new environment. So feedback from y'all really helps yeah. a lot. Um, we learn a lot through this. Number and, 32 uh, in iTunes. Sorry, I'm cutting what's you happening? off. Rudy said, if you're wondering, Now75 is currently number 32 in iTunes. Woo, that's awesome. That's great. That is really good. What does that mean for us? Can we know. say that we're 32 in iTunes? Right? Yeah, we're charting. Is that a we're pop? We're charting. That's probably the pop charts, right, Rudy? Hey, Kathy. Hey, Greg. Okay, or am I editing the videos and where are the inspirations coming from? Okay, well, where were you? So, you know, we had this whole year planned out, the tour was going to happen, and so we had a release coming and we we're going to do this massive video. And then, you know, they were like, no, you guys, no one can leave their house, right? All of U.S. is shut down. And that was so surreal. And we were just like, we're going to still put it out and we're going to figure out how to do a video. And so Matt and I edited Where Were You? 
We uh, took a lot of footage, like all the stuff you see of the crows in Yosemite and the, you know, the road going by and the bridges. We shot that on tour for years. I mean, going all the way back, you know, iPhone 4 style. And then we kind of interspersed that with some stock video we bought because we needed it. We couldn't have anybody film it. We filmed each other, um, you know, on a green screen in our house so that we could put the performance stuff overlaid and learn how to edit the video. We did it all ourselves. And here's an Easter egg. We lo I love putting little Easter eggs in things. So there's footage of us in that video performing that you guys might be like, hmm, where's that from? And it's from a video that's going to be coming out in October. So there's that that happened. And then, um, you know, from that, we went on we to Easter egg in Common Ground. Common Ground. Also has an Easter egg towards that, that future video. video. And so if you look at some of the stuff, you know, Common Ground, we were very hands on. We didn't film it. We did not edit it. Uh, we had a team do that professionally, and they worked on the video that's coming out in October. They're super talented people. We built the set. So we did that, yeah. We did the, um, the a lot of the set decoration with help from. Yeah, the whole concept was ours, and um, yeah, we hired people. Costuming it was me she and a girl named Megan. She's the girl in white with the horns. And, yep. Yes. She helped do all the costumes with me. Heather made I kind of wanted crowns. them all like nameless faceless like it could be any of us right so that's why they have the veils over their face so it's not a person it's just a being a human concept being. um and then I, yeah i made all those crowns sat there and made them all um if you look there's one on the very beginning of the video, uh, song when it says a crown made of rust and you see the close-up and there's this beautiful brown jewel my grandmother who's going to be 99 next month she was uh, moving out of her house into a house with my aunt to help, you know, my aunt takes care of her, really good care of her. And um, so they were getting rid of things and she's like, I don't need this coat. And so they were going to donate the coat, but it had these beautiful buttons. And so I cut all the buttons off and she gave them to me and that's the buttons that are in the crown. Uh, so that's kind of bringing my grandmother in because she also beat breast cancer. And so she's like my hero. Um, so anyway, then Matt made the cart that we're being pulled on, that we're kind of in the middle. And on the cart, if you look where I'm standing, at my feet are these rocks. And these rocks were actually in the video that's coming out in October. Those would be very important. Yeah. And the symbol is also very, very important. So you guys keep an eye out when that happens, when things happen in only a couple of months. We're always trying to drop little Easter eggs. It's yeah. fun. We're, we're artists, you know, so we kind of... We get into all that stuff and, and we like when bands would drop little Easter eggs and videos and then you see something like, oh, wait, I remember this from that. Right. And then connections are made. It's it's cool. It's, it's fun. Kind of fun. You know, and uh, one day we'll have to do some trivia because, you know, when we were writing uh, Where Were You, we finished. It was like, wow, there are so many, not just, you know, um, bringing up moments in history, but there were a lot of references to songs in pop culture and so you know maybe one day we'll do a like a little youtube contest or something you know and whoever can on that video you know we'll have people start listing out what songs they hear and we'll just pick a random number and win something you know who knows i'm also thinking if you guys are interested we were like we kept all the crowns and it was like maybe one day somebody might want to own the crown you know and help recoup some money from the video so we might put that up in a store online and sell the crowns and we took down pieces of the set and we were thinking we might just start painting. Maybe we'll do a painting afternoon and, you know, on Friday we'll set up, you know, easels and paint with you guys here and then we'll sell the pieces of artwork. Who knows? You know, we just want to get creative and clever and bring you guys in as parts of it. Elle's changing oh, the subject. Jambalaya. About food. What food do we miss? Well, now I'm missing jambalaya. All you said, they just had that for lunch. Uh, well, we cook. Yeah. So we don't really miss a lot, but we don't get a lot of uh, seafood. Miss a lot of the good seafood. Yeah. And you can get it out here, but it's not cheap like it is in South Louisiana. Maybe not as good. Definitely. If you can, yeah, if you get it from there. If you can get gold, like gulf shrimp right off the boat. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. The, the crabs, the blue crabs in the gulf. I guess we miss that. Yeah. I miss good seafood. You know, I think mostly what I miss is like the conversations, you know, not that we don't have them, but, you know, when you like down in South Louisiana, everybody gets together and 
everyone eats and you're all talking at the same time and there's three different conversations going on at once. You're probably talking about food while you're eating food. Exactly. Yeah. That's when you know you're with a Cajun. You know, you're planning the next meal while you're eating. Um, Ooh, number four in the pop tarts. Pop oh, two. you're okay. making me happy. I love it. That's good. I mean, it seems like we should be able to brag about some of this. I know, right? So, Sean, uh, you're from Ohio. We love Ohio. We're it's at in Ohio. A lot of fun. We were uh, Heather's. Heather's from La Rose, Louisiana, which so is so I'm like right on the Gulf of Mexico, way it's south. Cajun country, and I'm from Ruston, Louisiana, yeah. which is way north, Very north of Louisiana. Very it's different, but both just cool. South, like north central, just just south of Arkansas. Different worlds entirely. That state is kind of cut in half. You know, the lower half is more Catholic and Cajun. Cajun, more, you know, a little more French. Yeah, and then the, I guess the, from there up is more in the Bible Belt. Um, all, yeah. all beautiful, all great. Wow, L. Okay, so yeah, we're only three hundred fifty views away from forty thousand. I'm Almost there. Down. So that's two weeks now, right? Yeah. It's been up for two weeks. So that's exciting. That's pretty good. Guys. Thank you all for all the views. I mean, it thanks just, for sharing and sharing. It really makes us so happy. And I mean, you know, if I can brag for just a second, I do feel like this song, people need to hear it now. And when I hear comments of people like I found this and it's just touched me and made my day, that's what we want. I mean, we put a lot of effort into songs, you know, I love a good pop song. I love a good background party song, but the kind of stuff we make are the kind of songs that, you know, touch people's hearts and make people cry. You know, and that's kind of what we hope to do, you know, is really make you think, make you feel. Or make you cry. Yeah. It's all in my big plan because I bought stock in Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, Matt's from Ruston. Yep. Yep, up by all your cousins. That's where we met in Ruston, and we started playing coffee shops, lots of Alice in Chains covers until we could write our own and just building it up, you know. And we were teenagers when we started singing together. So we've had some practice. We were in art school. So yeah. doing this this music video, Common Ground, felt like art school because it was like late nights. We were just getting in there, getting dirty, building these this set and, and doing a lot of art set decoration and it felt like art school it was cool yeah definitely we had a lot of fun in art school and kathy's asking so all this new music is actually not new to us it's new to you guys um we wrote uh, like i said well time to go home we wrote before cancer and then we had to take time off i mean you know i was very naive it was like okay well i've got to stop working we're going to be doing this cancer thing and have chemo treatments Maybe I'll have all this time and I'll, you know, pick up French again. I learned it in high school. Maybe I can pick up French again. Maybe I'll learn to play the guitar. You know, I was lucky if I remembered my name. Yeah. One of the saddest moments was when I was meeting a new doctor for radiology and she was bubbly and exciting and, you know, well, where are you from? And I was like, and I looked at Matt and I was like, I don't remember my hometown. And that's the weirdest feeling. Because that's one of the things you learn, like in kindergarten, right? Where you live and what's your phone number. And I did not remember where I was. Chemo from. brain. I was is just a thing. exhausted. And so there was really no time for anything, including music. Um, I wasn't much better, honestly. No, I, mean, he was I think your stress yeah. just wears you out. And so you're you're drained of everything. And that is especially for like creativity. There was no There was nothing. But it started coming back, surely and you know, slowly but surely it started coming back. And I think because we had gone through such a traumatic and crazy life, like a year, we had so much to pull from. And that's where, you know, where were you, Common Ground, all these came from. We wrote and recorded them last year. I think I was finally kind of feeling up to it end of summer, maybe. We just hit the studio and sent them all out, got them mixed by a great friend of ours. You know, he's a great, he's the guy we trust with our music, Kevin Arndt. And then a guy named Justin Perkins from mystery room masters it and uh we love it and they sent it back and it was just like oh my god this is like beautiful you know and so yeah we've just been putting them out now and it's exciting to finally see them hit the light of day yes yeah, so we were saying we're, we're we're doling them out every like four to six weeks is kind of what we're doing right now but um yeah that's where we're trying to figure out like do we just continue doing that for 
the foreseeable future are to package it up at some point and sell, you know, a body of work, right. a CD, which was what we had intended to do. Um, for you know, sure. we were, yeah, we were going to have like a full on uh, CD for this Rick Springfield Chicago tour. Um, and so when that got squashed by this COVID thing, we decided that we would just to stay kind of active and, and keep content flowing. We would just start putting out things four to six weeks. And then we jumped into this YouTube thing, trying to, uh, trying to grow our audience on YouTube because it, you know, we looked at, I think when we first started this thing, right when the pandemic hit, I would say probably April, we had like 225, 287. Okay. Yeah. Was, something like it that. It was bad. Cause we weren't subscribers. putting anything up, you know, yeah, it was like low subscribers. Yeah. And now I don't know where we are. 700 and something, which is huge. something, which is great, it's but exciting. it's still kind of skewed because, you know, we have a bigger fan base, yeah. but it's just, they're not on here YouTube. on YouTube yet. We'll fix that. But they may be on YouTube, but they haven't subscribed right. to our thing yet. Yeah. We're, we're trying to, trying to work that out. Yep. So I see Sean says Bowling Green near Toledo. We've, Played a lot around that area with. We've Hodgkin. definitely played Toledo. Yep. We were in Bowling Green, not that long ago. Yeah. Bowling Green's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's a cool town. We did not play Bowling Green, but we played at a, weirdly enough, uh, like a vape shop near there or something. At a oh yeah, that was cool. It was fun though. But yeah, it was a, like a weird like a yeah. vape shop. Interesting. It was a few years. It had back. like a, an actual proper stage, stage and, and everything sound in or whatever. It. Yeah. So. Yeah. We'll get back there. Yeah, we like Ohio a lot. Y'all stop talking about food. It's making me hungry. I know Lots we didn't have lunch because we were trying to like crawfish stop. pie. <laughs> uh, non Louisiana folks don't know anything about a crawfish pie. No, what I've perfected is pralines. It's a lot of work, but that's usually what I'll do is like a little gift, like when I finished radiation. You know, it's. Um, Interesting because you see these people every day, you know, and the team I had definitely, I was scared because, you know, they tell you there's always a chance it could damage your lungs. And I'm like, please, no, be careful with my lungs. I'm a singer, you know, please. And they were so kind and they made it a lot of fun. If you can call radiation fun, you know, um, I didn't dread every day, basically. And so at the end of it, I sent them all I made pralines and gave them out. And so I'm ringing the bell and they're all just stuffing their faces. It was good. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Sometimes I make jambalaya, but it's hard to get shrimp. So I used to do chicken, but I might try some shrimp. I think, you know, if I can find a safe, good shrimp. I'll Sean be says he loves the cover art for common ground. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Is yeah. that the, what is that? The screenshot? It's the, it's a, well, it's a photo. So when we were used to tour with our rock band, Hydra Vibe, we toured a lot with a band called Uncrowned. And we've kept up with all these people. I mean, when you're on the road, you become tight friends. We keep up with everybody. And uh, one of the guys, Jack, and his wife just moved out here. So when we were looking to do Common Ground, I mean, it's like, you know, again, there's people that are afraid to come out. And I understand. I mean, everyone, you know, is scared of this disease. They don't want to get it. They don't want to bring it back home to family. So we just kind of put the word out to friends. It was like, all right, this is what we've got going on. We need when in, the idea initially was a lot of people in this, in the video. And we thought what the smallest number we can get to still make it have the impact would be safe. So people could be, you know, kind of separated out. And, you know, of course, if people weren't comfortable doing it, we understood, but we got a group of people in and Jack, his wife is in it. She's the one with the black mask on doing all the really cool Cheyenne, Cheyenne, creepy stuff. And um, she was fantastic. And I linked all these people in the description of the video because all of them are talented, you know, creative people and a lot are from Louisiana. But um, Cheyenne was in it and Jack said, do you guys mind if I come? We're like, of course, come hang out. Well, we're putting you to work. So we said, here's a camera. One of the camera guys brought a still camera, a really good one. And he showed him how to do it. And so Jack was just taking photos behind the scenes. And that photo was, all of us were like, that's the one. I mean, it's just beautiful. So, you know, we took it and I did some stuff in Photoshop and made sure it looked really good. And then, yeah, that's the album cover. And it just sums it all up, right? The light side, the dark side, but we're all coming together in the middle. What's one of the weirdest places you've played? Hmm. Uh, Let me think about this. 
we played some weird places. We really have. We That's played true. some awesome, huge places. We played some dime yeah. dives, and we love it all. All of it. Um, weird. I'm trying to think of weird. Remember the one time there was a place? This was with Hydra Vibe, not with those at St. Marie. I've got two of them for you. Um, and it was like there was a bar, and the stage was up in the bar, above the bartenders. It was called uh, Porticol. Um <laughs> No, no, that wasn't Portocol. Portocol was to the side with the brass. This was a weird, it was a there, rock venue. Weren't there two Portocols? Oh, maybe. Maybe so. But there was one. It was weird because we had to, like, climb up onto the bar and then climb up onto the stage and then kind of, like, load the gear over the bartenders. And they were literally at the, our feet serving drinks yeah. and were singing. It, it not was, that was it, Not the one. Outer Banks, no, no. It's but a, I thought it was called Portocol. Maybe so. Unless there, it was, is there a town called uh, in, he's got a big it's, it's in Ohio. Places. I know it's in Ohio. Okay. Um, and yeah. that one was an interesting one. Yeah. It, but yeah, it was weird. We were like in a uh, kind of a. It's like a circular. It was, it was like this turret. Yeah. And then I, I don't. I don't know. It's hard to, yeah. to describe. There was another one out in uh, <coughs> North Carolina, and a lot of big bands have played there. But when you come into the city. It's a dead zone, literally. Like no one's cell phone worked. No cell service. No cell phone service. And you're in there. There was no air conditioning. So if you ever see photos of like Hydra Vibe and we're just like, I would be dripping with sweat. My face would be so red to getting off the stage and everybody's like, let me get a photo. It's like, okay. <laughs> that was a strange club, but we did it a lot. It was always fun. We slept on the stage. We did sleep we on the slept stage. on the drum riser. On the drum riser. And because uh, we, I mean, again, we were living in our van as a DIY band, and it's like, all right, we slept on the stage, and I would have nightmares the after that. When we finally came home, <clears throat> we were touring for nine months straight, and you'd sleep in the van while it was driving down the road. You'd sleep wherever you could, and finally we were home, and I guess I halfway woke up in the middle of the night, and I'm on this big bed. And it's too still and too quiet. And I thought, oh, my God, we're asleep on that stage. And they were about to raise the curtains. And I'm, like, screaming, get up, get up. We have to get up. And he's like, shut up. We're home. <laughs> For Dozot St. Maria, a very weird one, only because of the lineup. See, when we first started touring as Dozot St. Marie, we had a lot of rock connections, you know. And these people are like, yeah, we want you guys back. And so we actually opened up a, a, for Mushroom Head at a big festival. And that was interesting. It was a great the thing super metal it was weird because it was metal every everything i mean was everyone metal. was just screaming and it was metal and then we're like in this corner set up between the bands and we're playing acoustic <laughs> and i was like oh gosh it's gonna be like that one movie where there's like throwing stuff at us but they loved it they it was great. really got into it they dug it we had a great time mushroom head guys came yeah. over and talked to us talked after to us. Like, they you really guys are dug awesome it. and yeah they're like we love the right. melodies i great. mean it was you know so yeah, we've had a lot of weird ones, but they're all great, you know. What's your favorite Cajun phrase? Hmm. It's Pila. Nobody knows I about say that Pila. A lot. Pila. Pila means awesome. Has anybody on here ever heard Pila? Is it just a Cajun thing? Because someone said they went to San Diego and heard a surfer say it, but we could say Pila. Um <laughs> next up opening for ICP, right? We'll do it. We'll, <laughs> I mean, put we'll us out it. there, we'll play for anybody. We'll do it. So uh Greg wants to know, do you write the lyrics of music first? It depends. It depends. So like both. Usually it's music first, but sometimes, you know, like I'll have an idea and come to him and he's like, Oh, I can do something with that one. Um sometimes like sinking down. That's an interesting one because we actually wrote Sinking Down when we first moved to LA, like long, years and years and years ago. That song has been sitting there just waiting for his day in the sunshine. Um, I was kind of homesick. He had new gear and he's like, you know, come hang out at the studio. I'm gonna just, you know, figure this amp out. And he was just riffing around and I'm like, hey, wait, 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 wait. Cause I had my sketchbook, I was drawing and all of a sudden like whatever he was playing just started coming to me. And within no time, I had the whole chorus. And it was kind of in my mind, I was missing South Louisiana. I was thinking about Kate Chopin, who was an early feminist writer. She wrote short stories. And one of them that I always love was The Awakening. And it's all about this woman, you know, back in the last century or two centuries ago, actually late 1800s. I mean, women really didn't have a say 
they were told what to do and they just had a set role in life and she just wanted more i think and she was really depressed about it and you know was out in grand isle which is that stuck with me because that's down where i'm from and so that's kind of what i was thinking about and i was writing you know about it, it was kind of funny i'd had a dream and i couldn't figure out if i was awake and just couldn't see because it was dark or if I actually had lost my eyesight and I was blind. I mean, don't ask me why I have weird dreams. So that's kind of where that was coming from. And it was like, wait, that's symbolic, you know, or are you really like She's halfway blind anyway. But... I, yeah. I started wearing glasses <laughs> when I was three. Um, and so side tangent on that one, one time I actually fell asleep with my contact lenses in and I woke up, I was like, I can see I'm cured. And I was like, oh, great. Uh, I was just jealous with my contacts in. But anyway, sinking down, you know, it kind of, all of those things kind of culminated into like this symbolism, you know, for being lost in your life and trying to figure yourself out or doubting, you know, we had just moved to LA and it's like, oh my gosh, I mean, things are so expensive. We're all the way far from home. And I mean, was this the right thing to do or not? You know, it's just, you start wondering, but you have to sometimes take those leaps of faith. And so that's kind of where that song came from. And he wrote the music to those lyrics, you know, with that little riff he was playing. And then we sat on it because it really wasn't a Hydra Vibe song. Yeah, and so we sat on that for years. I mean, we Sticking just sat down, there. Sat for years and years. And then finally. We tried it. We tried different yeah. things. We tried to bring it back. Never worked It out. just never was right. And so we waited on it. And then finally, with those out same room, it was like, yeah, maybe, you know, the song can kind of see the light of day. And. Here it is now, you know, and it's, we just put a lyric video out for it. And, uh, and the, our lyric videos, guys, I mean, I know they're not getting a lot of hits. I hope that's not because people think that they're, they're crap, but uh, <laughs> maybe it's just, you know, lyric videos aren't as, you know, you, you don't attach to them maybe because we're not in them. I don't know, but I think they're useful because you guys can learn the lyrics because there's no liner notes, right? With a MP3 or streaming. Um, but we get a buddy from the college where we met up in Ruston, Louisiana. He went to college at Louisiana Tech and he's in the design program we were in. And he's a great guy. He's become a really good friend of ours, Will Usman. And he's super talented. So he's been working with us. You know, I'll give him an idea of my vision or sometimes I'll say like, I don't know what to do. And we kind of brainstorm together and work on it. And come up with these lyric videos for you guys. Well, by the way, Greg, that I would say primarily it starts with music. I got on a tangent, we, sorry. You know, but it, it we we don't we don't force anything. We never sit down and say, "Hey, we're going to write a song right now." Um, we never, inspiration just comes. Yeah. It's, we it's typically usually don't write music. about something either. No, it's kind of what are you hearing? It's we almost never say right. we're going to write about this today. We, the only time we've ever done that is uh, when we did Killer Inside. We wrote right. that for Saw Three, yeah. the movie, because. Um, the director gave us kind of a... We had the inside scoop before yeah. the, well, before they were even filming. We knew kind of the synopsis of the movie. We were sworn to secrecy. And they asked us to please write a song for it. And if you guys are familiar with the, the, the movies, um, in the it was supposed to initially be a trilogy. It was so successful, they just kept going. But in the third one, from the very beginning, they knew that the female, who was initially the victim, was going to actually become the killer and kind of a twist on things. And um, because this was the, you know, arc of her character, they asked us to do the song. And it was cool because I was the first female vocalist, you know, to have that song on a soundtrack for the Saw series and the Saw franchise. And yeah, that was first a huge honor. Inclusion yeah, in the, in the franchise. franchise. And um, if you guys love horror movies, you go rent it or watch it, uh, the director's cut has our video, our song playing when the menu's up on the DVD, and then our video is included in the bonus features. But I think I linked our Hydra Vibe channel on our Doze Out St. Marie, so you can go check it out there. That was a fun video to shoot. And Shawnee's in it. She did some vocals on the chorus. We were a song for Twilight. We did, but actually. It didn't make it. It didn't make it. But we, so that's, we did. So we that was did two. Two. We wrote specifically for a purpose. That's the only time yeah. that I think we've ever written, you yeah. know, with something in mind like that. Yeah. Which was a fun exercise. I mean, maybe that's something we should think about doing, you know. Yeah. But typically it's just the inspiration hits us in either like a, you know, a vocal melody or a lyric. But sometimes you're hearing a like word, a riff, you know, kind of like, I mean, I was a huge Beatles fan. I still am. But I'm just saying, like, back in the day, I would read anything and everything I could get my hands on with Beatles. And Paul McCartney always said that their song Yesterday 
for the longest time, he would hear syllables or hear something and you just kind of drop in dummy words. And so forever that song was scrambled eggs. And that's kind of, we find ourselves doing a little bit of that as well. You know, you hear something and you're like, okay, I'm hearing this. Now I need to find a word that actually makes sense, you know, that I can drop in that has that same kind of sound or syllable, number of syllables. That's kind of what we do, just slot it in. How did Audrey not know that we had a song in Saw 3? That's crazy. Probably too young for that. That's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Catch up. Yep. Man, Faith, I wish we had a song in Hunger Games. Wouldn't Mm. that be fun? That's a great series. Yeah, we need to get some more some more placements we've had some song placements in like mtv and obviously the saw three yeah and that's a few we've others a but few. not not as many as we like i'd love to be on all the time where you guys are like there's matt and heather again in this car commercial there's matt and heather again on my favorite tv show that's what we need <laughs> that's what we, we need need. To, need to bug you with our presence always right we won't ever leave you guys alone so what else any other questions for us or um yeah tell the plaisance family hello uh, so now Sean. we knew we were up for it we knew that our name had been put in the hat probably in like when now 74 came out right after that they had already started for the next one and we knew that our name had been submitted um we typically try but, to forget about these things yeah. like we get good news like that and it's like yay and then we try to forget about it because yeah. you never nine know. times out of ten things Don't just pan it out. doesn't pan out you know so um so we just yeah. kind of put that out of our head and we continue on with things that we can control because that we can't control right but i think it might have been end of june it was quick because we were like "Ooh, we found out it's like guys you're actually you're confirmed congratulations you're officially a part of the now 75 family and it was like oh gosh, we got to hurry now because now we have to do a music video because we knew it was like, you don't waste a huge opportunity like that. I mean, that's an audience globally. It's such a longstanding compilation series. You know, it was like, we have to go all in. So we had to scramble to get a music video put together. And so it was like, what's the concept? What's the vibe we want? Met with the team and probably it was like, I think we had a week and a half, two weeks to get everything done and our wish list was kind of crazy you know we came (laughs) we always dream here (laughs) yeah our dreams are way bigger than our pocketbooks always and so uh yeah we went to him we said look we want to have our our theory like right now uh in in times like this this pandemic thing i think that any little bit of you know comfort anything i think is good and so we thought let's do a music video that is reminiscent of classic 90s era heyday of mtv right. music videos that was so that was our main thing it has to be that We're, we said look you know rem's losing my religion but maybe like just you know more modern and some more a little bit more fantasy to it or whatever um uh, and we uh, went to our friends alice and roberto and sebastian paquet um just brilliant filmmakers and friend, great friends really all around talented good people that's our people yeah and so we were hanging out at their house and uh, talking about it and, you know, we started sketching out stuff and, you know, Allie really loves labyrinths. So you kind of have a little bit of a labyrinth thing in mm-hmm. there. And so kind of sketch it out and then send it out to get quotes on it. Quotes came back in. It was like going to be more than we paid for our vehicle. And those yeah. were the, like the, the friend hookups. Yeah, this is a bro deal. And it was still just so, I mean, it's expensive. It's you know, so expensive. The gear, I mean, just the production. Yeah. And you have to find that fine line because you can save money, but then it might look like you saved money. So we wanted to spend as much as we could to get that pro, real, you know, beautiful video without going brand, you know, broke. <laughs> and that's what we ended up doing. And we kind of was like, all right, well, here's the, the price as well. Called in favors. We, you know, called in favors. Our friend was like, I've got a warehouse. It's got under construction right now. You guys are welcome to use it if you clean it out. So we're, we have footage. Matt and I are going to put that up one day of like he and I in there on a Sunday sweating and just moving mountains of construction stuff out, mopping, sweeping. And then it was like, well, I can build a lot of the props. I can hopefully come up with the costumes. And then when, you know, we started asking for actors 
the one girl was like, well, look, I mean, I do fashion, Megan, you know, it was like, I do fashion stuff. I was like, and she's like, I'm willing to help you just pay for the fabric. I'm like, thank you. Okay, great. Send her photos and of what I wanted. And, you know, she made it happen. You know, Matt and I called in a friend of ours who's a handyman and was like, we need to build these sets because the set was going to be expensive. And so Matt and he, you know, screws, hammer, <laughs> nails, all of it, it's built it. Huge set. We have footage of that too. It's massive. Yeah, we're going to yeah. do a behind the scenes, a making yep. of sort of thing. And then Dylan Hutchins, we hired. He's a great production designer and he got the idea immediately and was like, okay, well, you really need to spend the money on this tree. We can rent this tree. And the tree is actually like over a hundred years old. Massive. And that was the centerpiece, right? Because that's the middle ground. That's the common ground and the wisdom of an ancient tree, the symbolism. Like, so we spent the money there. And then he just, you know, got in there and we just, you know, glued all the feathers to fishing line and he's painting and, you know, just made it happen. Did it. You know, and it was just it gorgeous. Was a week of a lot of work. A lot. You know, she and I had to clear out the space. It was a mountain of construction materials. We cleaned up after we got time lapse of all that. Yeah. So we're going to, we're, you know, we're so busy. There's so much stuff going on, but yeah, we got to edit down that too. And uh, we'll, we'll be releasing that. But anyway, yeah, it was, uh, I think a success. I mean, it, yeah. uh, it came out exactly, you know, how, how we, we wanted, wanted it. The vision is just what we saw in our mind. And it was lit by Dane Malin and he shot and um, also it, did a lot of editing and colorizing and then sebastian was uh, also the other camera guy and um did a lot of the editing and it's just beautiful you know and it was cool it was fun they did all the old tricks like they had prisms and little um crystal beads that they were hanging and swirling in front of the lenses as they were shooting and that gives all that really cool trippy look i mean if you slow yeah, it down it's not plugins you no, know that's for real there's moments where i'm singing and you can see matt's face kind of superimposed back here i mean it was gorgeous and then that whole spin thing which i know is you know really popular on like TikTok and all that stuff i mean they actually did it with the camera you know just doing it over and over again and the girls were swirling the fabric i mean it was just so fun so much fun audrey had asked about um jade uh, you know, oh, yeah. Okay. she's from New Orleans. She's actually from LaRose. From LaRose. So again, we called in fan, you know, friends. And uh, I told you guys about Cheyenne. She's a musician, a beautiful model as well. And, you know, she was the girl with the horned mask in what? the, do in the, in the uh, dark. dark side. The other girl on the dark side is Ashlyn Aaron, who's a mu beautiful singer. Great she had the voice. Crown. She had the crown. Um, she's a dancer as well. She moved out here from North Louisiana. We've known her for a long time. So it was great to have them come in. Um, her friend, Megan, we didn't know, but met. And she's the girl that's a fashion designer and stylish stylist. And she's in the light color with the mask. And then I called a friend of mine from LaRose. Her name is Tiffany Billiot. And I had heard that she moved out here kind of right when we were going through the cancer thing. She and her husband and their two daughters moved out here from LaRose and their daughters have been getting acting jobs because yeah. New Orleans has just been like a hot spot for acting. And they were doing really well. And they said, this is what we want to do. And we're going to just take that leap of faith and hit LA and try to make it happen. And so I called her and I said, hey, I mean, we're doing a music video. You guys are in town. I would love for y'all to be in it. Obviously the pay is like not, not mm -hmm. much at all, but if you guys want to be in it, she was like, absolutely. We'd love to be a part of this and help you. So her two daughters are Jalen Ray and Jade Billiot, and initially they were both going to be at the tree. And night before shooting, we had a cancellation. And let me tell you, he and I were like, I don't know what we're going to do. Panicking, like uh, all of our money, all of our time, everything's like, oh my god, we're like this. We have to make it was this happen. Nerve-wracking afternoon. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then Ali said, well, I mean, you know, Jalen Ray is 15, 16. I mean, maybe she's old enough if she feels open to it to taking the adult role. And uh, I asked and she was like, yeah, and slid in perfectly. She was so good. So she's the girl with the white gauze and the beautiful crown with all the jewels dripping and everything. And uh, she did an amazing job. She's just so graceful with everything. And Jade stayed in the middle as the girl in the center who's not choosing. Even people are pulling her from side to side. And so Jade has just been fantastic as well. It was wonderful to watch her. I, mean, I knew they were gonna be good. But oh my gosh, like everyone was so professional and watching Jade work with the director because the director 
was like, okay, for this scene, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. And she's like, okay. And then just did it and nailed it. And I'm like, oh, God, I hope I'm not good when it's my turn to be on the camera. I'm looking here because there's like, there's a spider on the way behind you, but no, I don't see it. Hmm. No. Hopefully not. No spider. So, yeah, Kathy, Common Ground turned out just absolutely everything we could have hoped it. I mean, it's just so magical. And the experience was magical. Everyone, like I keep talking about the people that were in it and the crew, but it's it's a beautiful thing when artists all come together and just make something that's bigger than all of it. And that's what happened here. You know, it's just I'm forever grateful for all of it. They were great. They kind of knocked it out of the park. There ain't no yeah. spider. Forget about it. There's no spider. There ain't no spider, kids. What else? So Jade, yeah, she did go to school with you, and she's just great. And I'm, we're really hoping that, you know, this is huge for everybody's career. You know, for all of them. Dream, collaboration. Mm. Uh, Brandy Carlisle right now. Yeah. Seems to be on fire in every way, and so I think it'd be really cool to collaborate yeah. with her. Her, I think our, our styles of music go together. It's the same kind of that emotional she seems to be doing a lot of collaboration, so she's kind yeah. of in that mode. That would be. Yeah, and I mean, to go huge. take it a step further, how about Dolly Gordon? I mean, ooh, love her. She's just amazing. I got no problem with spiders. <laughs> I don't mind spiders. You know why? I grew up in South Louisiana, where I don't care how clean you are, you're going to have roaches. I mean, you live in a swamp, you know, my mother would say kitchens close and you bleach down the counters, put all the trash outside and you'd still have roaches. And I hate them. And I, when I learned that spiders will eat roaches, I was like, bring them on. I love <laughs> spiders. <laughs> we don't have any roaches. But we don't here, have man. any bugs. That's one of the reasons I love California. <laughs> no bugs. Oh, thank you, Maureen. Thank you. So yeah, we're going to put out another song. We're thinking it might be a cover in between, but we definitely have a new original song coming out in October. And that one's another special one. It's got a gorgeous music video as well. And um, it was actually, the music video was shot last August, I believe, right? Last August, September? Yeah, August. August. Yeah. So I look very different. It was like, you know, right when I was coming out of my little hidey hole from cancer, <laughs> you know, but uh, it was another beautiful experience. Not a whole lot of hair. No, I did, really didn't. It was kind of funny. And I, you can see my face is still a little puffy from all the steroids they had Chemo me on. So I look different, get but a puffy. it was fun. It was a great experience. Great. Oh, yeah. Great. It was fun. Daniel's asking if money wasn't an issue, where would you like to shoot your next video? Iceland or um, Scotland. Great. I guess you're only saying that because you want to visit there, but right. But I mean, Iceland. Like, Iceland so a lot of our music deals with like you know life and death or love and loss. It's always like putting these um, opposing forces, you know, right? And I think that's Iceland in a nutshell. I mean, we're the land of fire and ice. You know, I feel like if you go to visit there, you're seeing like how the Earth was formed, and I just feel like you could just stick an iPhone up and then do, you know, something stupid and you've got a beautiful video in Iceland, right? Paula's got rattlesnakes, bears, mountain lions. We got all that here. Well, yeah, we do, but we not in our house. <laughs> I don't think we've seen a bear in California. We've we seen a bear in Louisiana. In North Louisiana. People thought we were crazy, mm -hmm. but there was a baby bear in a tree right outside my apartment. It was lost. When was the last time my hair was short? Allison's Ooh. asking, I think so. During the Kelly Osborne times. Yeah. So I stopped cutting my hair. I remember the, the day that I stopped cutting my hair. Uh, I was playing American Music Awards with Kelly Osborne. And, you know, we were doing this. I was doing the spiky hair thing. And it took literally like two and a half hours. It took longer for him to get ready than Kelly Osborne. Right. And, I mean, like, seriously. And she's the star. So but just, but I, to be fair, he is. A perfectionist in all ways i'm telling you guys like y'all don't know how much work it is for us to get a video up every friday on youtube because we're both perfectionists and we'll do something and if you guys are probably like yeah it was great and we're like i don't know Sucked. that Sucked. one word you did was a little bit weird i don't know or oh you know and so we're just perfectionists and he's like that with everything good news is if he says 
I say, hey, do I look all right? He's like, yes, you look good. Then I know I'm okay because he doesn't let anything slide. So his hair was perfection, but it took so long. Both of us were in there in the dressing room trying to get his hair ready. And he was like, never again. Yeah, stop, stop. Stop. That was the last time. So whenever I played American Music Awards, I'm going to say it was 2004, five, three. Yeah. I don't know. Three, four. Y'all could probably find it on YouTube. Yeah. So whenever I played that, that was the last time I like, cut my hair from there on it was that was it just throughout yep i mean Audrey, you know obviously i trim it but yeah the netherlands that's another place i really want to visit there's a lot of places i want to visit i want to travel kathy's favorite song is time slips away right now. okay yeah yeah let's see what would you oh yeah okay so video for time slips away we, we should do right we have to one, do that you started one yeah um I don't know. That's that's such a special song, right? So it's gonna, you know, that's gonna take a special concept and a special video. Um, do you have ideas, Kathy? What do you see We're when you're uh, listening open. and close your eyes? Yeah. Yeah. What does it make? What What do you envision? You're an artist, you know. So what What do you see? Watch Dozat me go Saint. as Faith, and she said she grew out of her Dozat Saint Marie shirt. All right. Well, I've, I've got to get them. You know, we have shirts. We bought a bunch of shirts right before cancer. So they're sitting in storage right now. They've never seen the light of day. So I definitely, I've got to get on that. I've got to put the store up with some shirts and things and uh, CDs. 